Hello DevOps enthusiasts, welcome back to Let's Talk DevOps, your favorite pit stop to understand, learn, and enjoy every important topic in your DevOps journey. We've absolutely loved engaging in some fruitful, value-adding conversations on key DevOps concepts and queries. And today, let's get to know more about an exciting topic about how can Terraform achieve IAC in modern day DevOps. So to guide us on this, we've got our DevOps expert, Aditya Gupta. Hey Aditya, thank you for joining us and welcome to Let's Talk DevOps. Asalish, pleasure is all mine. Thank you for having me here. Great. Okay, let's begin with the basics. What exactly is infrastructure as code and how does Terraform fit into this? All right, uh, so infrastructure as a code is like that magic wand in today's infrastructure management. It's it's all about creating infrastructure more as a software code, which enable us to automate the provisioning, the configuration, and the management of our resources. And Terraform is definitely a superhero in IAC because it empowers us to declare our infrastructure more like the need of a language that is easily understandable. Great. So Terraform does sound like a game changer, but uh, let's break it down further. What are some key concepts that uh, our viewers uh, must know when diving into Terraform? So I believe there are four key things that uh, one should know about Terraform. And to name them is provider, the resources, the modules, and the state. If we talk about this provider, these are like our trusted friends whom we can communicate, or these providers help us communicate with various clouds and infrastructure platforms. These resources are those building blocks of our infrastructure dreams. The modules are those reusable part of code that we can use n number of times or any number of times in our code. And last, the state, which helps us to keep the track of what's written in the code and what's actually provisioned in the cloud. So these are the four things that one should know about. OK. OK, so what does a, a typical Terraform workflow look like? And uh, how, how does it uh, how does it streamline the deployment process? Yeah. So Terraform workflow has three parts. Initialization, planning and application. We initialize and tell that we are now going to create something. And then we create a master plan using a command Terraform plan. And finally, we apply to make our applications or build that infrastructure using the Terraform code that we wrote. That sounds great. But how, how do organizations leverage Terraform to build their digital empires? So Terraform has been used by organizations in a way that they, they find it fit. Maybe to create native applications to DevOps pipelines or from hybrid cloud environments to seamless migration. Terraform is that trusted companion of modern enterprises. It is offering many advantages for managing IAC, and, and that includes multi-cloud support, declarative syntax, immutable infrastructure, code reusability and immutability, along with the possibility of scalability and automation. Awesome. So how can teams uh, adopt IAC and how can one prevent uh, losing flexibility? So with Terraform, there are a lot of plugins that can be used and teams can tailor the Terraform as per their needs and they can combine it with the tools that they have been using like ansible 
for, make, for making comprehensive solutions and making it the right choice, or I would say the ultimate choice for effective provisioning and management of infrastructure. Okay. And, and would you be able to also help us with some real world, you know, use cases of Terraform uh, adoption across different industries? Right. So with this migration from on-prem to the, to the cloud, Terraform has acted like that one companion which has a lot to offer. Or even in cases of hybrid cloud environments, Terraform can be leveraged to manage the resources, both which are on-prem and also on the cloud. For all the DevOps and CI CD pipelines, Terraform helps us with the practices that will enable the teams to automate the creation right from the development to testing and also in the production environments. Okay. Uh, but are there any hurdles that users might encounter in adopting Terraform and how can they overcome them? Well, to be honest, yeah, Terraform does have a few. When things get to the complex codes or the complex configurations, when we have some resource dependencies and even with the licensing battles, but having the best practices adopted, careful planning and a bit of perseverance, we can overcome any obstacle in our path of the infrastructure in life. Awesome. This is such an incredible journey through the world of Terraform. Uh, so here's a massive shout out to you, Aditya, for sharing your wisdom with us today. Uh, it was truly insightful. Thank you, Salish. Pleasure is all mine. Great. And to our viewers, don't forget to catch our blog on negaro.com for more in-depth insights on this topic as well as on other topics that we've discussed about the world of DevOps and Terraform. With this, it's a wrap for now, and we hope you enjoyed this episode. And of course, until next time, keep smiling, keep working hard, and keep talking DevOps.